every layer in After Effects has the same group of five transform properties. Those properties are anchor point, scale, position, rotation, and opacity. If you learn how to work with those five properties, then you can work with just about any property in just about any effect inside After Effects. So I'm going to show you how to work with those properties in this lesson. To follow along, go to Working Files, open up the After Effects projects, and open up 0501 Properties. This project has one comp and has five layers. I didn't include every kind of layer you can have inside After Effects, but all layers do have transform properties. Let me show you how they lay out here. I'm going to select all these layers using a marquee selection method, and I'm going to click one of the disclosure triangles here. Since I've got five of these guys selected, any one of these disclosure triangles will open up all of their disclosure triangles like so. You'll see now if I scroll up a little bit, starting at the top, that the shape layer has a transform properties group. Down below, there's another transform, transform, transform. All five have the transform group of properties. I'm going to close them all down now like that. I'm going to work only on one, the one on the bottom here, the video layer. Open that one up. There's the transform group. You can use these disclosure triangles to open up these groups. I'm going to open up this transform group, and you'll see it has five properties. Anchor, position, scale, rotation, opacity. First of all, what's the anchor point? The anchor point, by default, is the center of most layers, but it doesn't have to be, but usually it's the center of most layers, and you can spot it with this little target there. The anchor point is the thing around which stuff happens. Two things happen. If I rotate this layer, like so, it'll rotate around the anchor point. If I scale it like so, it'll scale at the anchor point. The anchor point serves as kind of the center of these two different properties, scale and rotation. I'm going to undo those two things, like so, and get them back to the starting point. You can also hit reset to do that as well. Now you can see the anchor point there is blue, but you might not see it in some cases because it'll blend in with the background. You can always change the colors of these bounding box squares and the anchor point by clicking on the label here. Instead of choosing aqua, you could choose something else like purple, for example. And there it shows up there. Also changes the color here. I'll go back to the default though for video clips. Back to aqua. There we go. So now I want to move the anchor point. Now when I move the anchor point, it's a little confusing. It's kind of counterintuitive. The way you can change property values is by just typing in a new value, for example. So if I type in zero here and press the tab key, that'll move it to the edge. But it looks like it moved the clip and not the anchor point. But the anchor point is going to be still the center around which things happen. I'm going to press zero over here. And lo and behold, the anchor point is now in the upper left-hand corner. This is kind of an odd way to think in terms of position for things. When you think about the Cartesian coordinate system, 0, 0 typically is where the two lines intersect, the x and the y. But long time ago, people decided that the 0, 0 point in images and in frames like this would be the upper left-hand corner. So there is the upper left-hand corner. The anchor point is right there. And if I rotate it now, it's going to rotate around that point. Notice if I drag the clip and I have it right there and I try to fill the frame with it by taking the rotation back to 0 for the time being and try to get it right there to the edge. Look at the position value. If I change this to 0, 0, now the position is 0, 0. So the position of this clip is 0, 0. It's right up there. That's the position, which doesn't seem intuitive. You think the position would be somehow the center again, but it's the anchor point that determines the position value as well. So you get the anchor point there, and the position are both 0, 0. I can move the anchor point in a little more intuitive way using what's called the pan behind tool, this little guy right there. I click on that with the keyboard shortcut Y. I can grab the anchor point and move it around. And notice now, this time the clip is not moving as I move the anchor point around. I'm just positioning it somewhere toward the middle here, like that. If I take a look at it, we can see it's almost the middle. The middle that's of something that's 1920 by 1080 would be 960. 960. And 1080 divided by 2 is 540. And that would be the middle. So now I've got this guy centered up. If I center up the position now to 960 as well, 960 by 540. Now you've got everybody all centered up again like that. All right, let's talk about scale. I can change the scale. Now notice that as I hover over a number, my cursor turns into a scrubby, as it's called, or by the vernacular. It's a little index finger pointing up with two arrows coming out of it with this kind of an indication that if you click like this, it'll change the color so you can type in a new value. But if you click and then drag, then you can change the value. Now I'm changing the value both for the x and the y value, the height and the width here, because this is linked. This little link here says we're linking them. If I unlink them, 
And I can change them one at a time, like so. If I click the link back again, and it won't change it. It'll keep it at the sort of messed up version, and now they'll go back in concert again. So linking off, change it dramatically, turn it back on. It doesn't suddenly jump to the proper proportions. It just stays where it was and now works together like that. I'm going to reset this guy like so. Opacity is probably what you think. You can't be more than 100% or less than zero. 100% opacity shows you the whole thing. If I start dropping it, it starts disappearing away there. Now it's disappearing over the black background for this comp. The actual background is transparent. So if I start dropping it down like that, it'll disappear into nothingness. There we go. All right, let's take a look at something else. I'm going to close this down by clicking the disclosure triangle. I want to look at the solid layer here. This is the one right there, that red thing. Click on its disclosure triangle to reveal transform and open that up. There are its five transform properties. And they're already different than what you might expect because this is not 100%. It started out full like this, and then I shrank it down to use it as a background for this text. And so the scale is down to 62% and 24%, 62 for the length and 24% for the height. I did that not by changing these numbers, but by grabbing the corners here. Now, Right now I've got my pan behind tool, so I can't grab them now. I need to go back to the selection tool. I can press the V key shortcut to get back to selection. Now I can change it like this. And if you look over its scale there, notice how it got highlighted and the numbers are changing as I change this here. There we go. There we are. If I rotate it, it's going to rotate on the anchor point. So I'll rotate it like so. If you look at rotation, the value for rotation, there's a degree and then something X. X indicates the number of times something's going to rotate. So I'll take this thing back to zero. Now I want to have it rotate several times. Let's say five times, right? So I'll press that, press tab, and well, nothing's happening. It's not rotating, right? What's happening is it's just saying this is the current position. It's at zero degrees, and it's rotated five times. But nothing's happened because you need to animate it to actually get it to rotate five times. I'm going to talk about keyframes in the next lesson, but let's give you the preview here. I'll click on the stopwatch there to turn on keyframes at 5x. I'll go back over here, let's say, and I'll change this to 0x. And so if you just think about what's going to happen here, it's from there to there, it's going to rotate backwards or counterclockwise five times. I'll show you that real quick here. Here we go. And it's going to go one, two, three, four, five times. There you go. I'll undo that. Take those keyframes away. Put that back to zero. All right, let's move on to something else here. I'm going to go down here to the adjustment layer. Now you may wonder why should an adjustment layer even have transform properties, because adjustment layers are invisible. There it is, if I start changing the edge of the adjustment layer, you don't see anything going on. It just changes that little size there, but why bother having transform properties for an adjustment layer? I'm here to tell you there are all sorts of things you can do with adjustment layers that you're going to want to use with the transform properties. And I'll just show you one example here. I'll apply an effect called hue saturation. And I'll put that on the adjustment layer there. And I'm going to change the color just to make it really obvious that it's different there. Not really appealing, I suppose, but there you go. I'll just drop it down like that. And now let's say I want to highlight just part of this clip. And I can take the adjustment layer here and bring it in. So it just highlights part of the clip. That's why you want to have transform properties for the adjustment layer. And notice when I added the hue saturation effect over here, it added a new property group called effects. You have the transform property group and the effects property group. When you open up effects, you'll see that there's the hue saturation effect inside there. You open up it, and you see its properties when you open up that property group there. This can get rather complicated when you've got groups inside groups inside groups, and you're going to discover this as we go through After Effects. It's going to be quite a lot of sub-layers, if you want to call them there, quite a lot of groups as we add things to these various layers. Let me close that down, and I'm going to turn off the eyeballs so that you don't see that ugly purple there. Now I want to go up to the text and then to the shape layer. The text and shape layers both have extra property groups when you create them. The text layer has something called text, oddly enough, the text property group. And you open it up and it has a couple of properties there, a couple of property groups as well. Also has this option to animate. This is really the great power of After Effects. You can animate text on a per character, per word, or percentage basis. And you have all these various things that you can animate with text. And when you add an animator to text, it adds even more property groups and gets even more complicated. But here inside text, we've got the standard transform group. Again, with the anchor point for the text and other things like that. If I rotate it, it rotates by default with text in the lower left-hand corner. This kind of defies the thing about having 0, 0 be the upper left-hand corner. Here, the anchor point by default is the lower left-hand corner, and that is 0, 0. Just a little anomaly here. I'll rotate it, and it rotates on that position. If I want to move the anchor point, I can use the pan behind tool, or press the Y key to turn it on. See it there? 
take the anchor point and move it, let's say, over to here. So now when I rotate it, it'll rotate on that anchor point there instead. And notice now the anchor point has a new value to it instead of 0, 0. If I want to scale it, it'll scale based on that anchor point. That'll be the center of the scale as well. Change the opacity like that. All right, let's take a look at the last layer here, the shape layer. This is going to be interesting, I think, for you. It has two property groups, transform as you'd expect, and then contents. Now the transform has the standard transform group of properties there that we've seen now several times. If I look at the shape layer, it's these three guys here. So if I want to rotate them, I rotate them as a group around that anchor point. And that anchor point was set when I created the first of these three little circles, these ellipses. And after that point, the anchor point was applied for all three of them as I built them one at a time, like so. So you may not want to have them all rotate like that. You can also adjust the opacity of all of them. You may not want them all to change opacity as a group like that. This being After Effects, you've got many more options. I'll show you that inside the contents property group. And we're going to talk about working with shapes in some detail in upcoming lessons. So I'll just gloss over it here. You have three ellipses here. Each ellipse, get ready for this, each ellipse has its own transform properties. Let me open up the first one there. And I'll close the stroke and go to Transform Ellipse 1. There are the transform properties for that one little ellipse. I'll scroll down there. You see there are more transform properties. In addition to the set group, we've also got skew and skew axis. So I can skew it around like that. See that guy going? I'll just undo that. And I can also rotate it. Now remember, before, when we rotated the group, it rotated on that anchor point. But now if I rotate that single ellipse, it has its own anchor point, dead center in it, so it seems to rotate more naturally. And I can rotate each one individually, and I can animate those rotations separately from the entire group if I want to. If I want to change the opacity of just that one, I can change the opacity of just that one, like so. So that's a quick rundown on the transform properties. In the next lesson, we're going to use keyframes to have those properties animate over time.